Welcome. In this video, we will finally begin discussing the variational principle. Now, this is an, an, another amazing tool that we can use in physics. And what it says exactly is that if we cannot solve the Schrodinger equation for a particular Hamiltonian, right? So we have some Hamiltonian and we just don't know how to solve the Schrodinger equation for it. We, we just don't know how, right? And of course, we can't even apply perturbation theory if we don't know how to solve the, solve the Schrodinger equation. We are stuck. So what this is going to do is that the variational principle tells us that if we take the expectation value of any function, right, the expectation value of our Hamiltonian with any function, this will always, 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 always overestimate the energy of the ground state of this Hamiltonian. Okay, so what this is going to be useful for is that if we can take decent guesses of what the wave function might look like, then we can get, you know, a pretty decent estimate of what the ground state is. Of course, this doesn't really tell us <laughs> how far off we might be from the actual ground state, but it is a tool that can be very, very useful um, in getting relatively easy results. So how can we prove this so that we can, you know, be confident that we can use it? Now, it is usually not too important that you memorize or, or learn how to prove it, but of course it's important that at least once you see how it's done. It's not too bad anyways. So what we're going to do is that we're going to say, all right, so our function that we're going to try, our trial function, is going to be, we can rewrite it as the sum, basically as the linear combination of the actual wave functions of our system. Now, we don't really know exactly what they are, but we know that whatever they are, they form a complete orthonormal set, right? That's what wave functions do. So we can use a linear combination of them to express our trial function. So doing that, we can, we can now find this expectation value, or we can rewrite it actually. So that expectation value, instead of writing just psi, we're going to write what we just did here. So sum over, and well, because we have two psi's, we have to use two different letters. So let's use m here. So cn, uh, m, psi of m, and then the Hamiltonian is acting on this same thing, except that it's going to be n. All right, and here we can do a few things. So since, remember, the expectation value is basically an integral, we can take these summations out. So let's take this summation out. So we get summation over m, and we take the coefficient out. But remember, we have to take out the complex conjugate, right? That's the rule with brass. And then we are left with, well, actually, I'm skipping ahead. And what can we take out from this other one? Well, the Hamiltonian acting on the wave function, that's simply going to be the energy. Let's write it maybe here. So the energy En. And then we can take out sum over N, Cn. And we are left with the psi Ms and psi N. Now, what are these things? Let's remember. These things are the wave functions of our system for some energy level M and N. And what do we know about orthonormal states? Well, if they are not the same state, then this thing is going to be zero. If they are, it's going to be one because they are normalized. So this is going to be delta M N. Now it just started raining. I hope you can't hear it too loudly. Let me check. Okay, no, I think it's fine. Um, I hope. Now, so we can rewrite this as some I uh, almost forgot about the n, e n, um, c m conjugate, sum over m, sum over n, c n delta m n. Okay, so <laughs> I'm speaking louder because it's raining real loud. Okay, um, so this is going to be the energy and the delta function is going to kill one of these sums. So we are left with, I don't know, Let's stick with the n. So sum of cn conjugate cn. But this is simply cn squared, right? 
Okay, and what is the sum of Cn squared? There. What is this? Well, this has to be 1, right? This is something we've seen before. If we're writing our states as a linear combination of all the wave functions, their probabilities added up has to be 1, okay? Um, and that means that this entire thing here is simply En, so that energy level. So what this means, basically, is that the energy that we get from this expectation value, right, because this is what goes in here, so this tells us that the ground state will always be smaller than this energy that we just found. Right? Uh, that's the whole point. So whatever energy we find, it's always, 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 always going to be smaller uh, than the energy from the ground state. And if, in case that wasn't obvious right away, I think I didn't explain it all that well, is that the smallest En, right? So if we have En sum... Wait, what did I just do there? En then we sum over n cn squared. The, actually, this is 1, so maybe let's not write it down. The smallest energy we can get is, of course, the energy from the ground state. Right? So this is always going to be greater or equal than the energy from the ground state. That's the point. Right? The smallest n is always going to be the one from the ground state. That's where this comes from. So the important thing to take away from the variational principle is that regardless of which wave function you choose, you will always overestimate the energy from the ground state. Now, this doesn't tell you anything about the energy of the first excited state or second or whatever. This is only good, at least in this form, to find the energy or try to estimate the energy from the ground state. Again, we don't know by how much we might be off, but, you know, it's still a pretty good tool. So. Um, that's about it for this video. I'll do maybe two or three examples in, in following videos. So if you're a bit uncertain how to use it, don't worry. We will see it then.